Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. Guys, we're making our very own unique, one of a kind silicon mold in this video. Now, if you checked out my last video, I'll link it here. I was actually using some resin crete to create some pieces for my bedroom. I'm, I've done a bedroom makeover. Now, I have a brand new home channel coming later in the year around autumn, so definitely check that last video out and my new channel will be linked below. But I'm looking for this bowl. I'm looking for this chunky, chunky dish. And it was after the last videos, I was thinking, how can I create this deep chunky dish that I'm really really looking for for my bedroom it has to be a DIY job and it has to be a job that we can all do together it has to be simple it's a two-step process I'm going to be using let's resin silicon rubber cookie cutters and of course this white silicon mold you've seen me use this on my channel before I actually made an aquarium using this mold. I love it, it's perfect for this deep, chunky chunk of a dish that I really, really want to make. How do we make a silicon mold from nothing? So, we have a cookie cutter, okay? We are going to use our Let's Resin Silicon Rubber to create a silicon inlay. You would have seen me create silicon inlays on my channel before just using molds. And I've done like tea light holder silicon inlays as well using much smaller cookie cutters. And this is how we're going to do it. My brain was trying to work out the logistics of how it would all come together. So again, it's a two step process. We're making a silicon inlay and we're going to make a mold of that. Then we're going to mold the mold. <laughs> Simples. We're going to measure out our silicon in a jug. Now, again, this is Let's Resin Silicon Rubber. I am an ambassador. Your discount code is below if you fancy getting a hold of anything. Actually, pretty much everything I use in this video is from Let's Resin. So do check out that code if you fancy getting your hands on anything. Now Let's Resin Silicon Rubber is colorable. You can actually add mica powder to your silicon to make it a nice color. And I'm adding green mica just because the mold I'm using is white. So I just, I didn't want white on white. I figured it would give me a nice contrast and help me kind of see where I'm putting my silicon inlay. So you saw me there, I've taped up the bottom of my cookie cutter. Now that's not ideal, sellotape does leave ridges, but again, the way I'm placing this down in the mold, I'm hoping that those ridges don't have a detrimental impact, if, if that makes any sense. This is about six hours later. Our silicon rubber has um, fully cured. So again, this is measurable by weight, one to one. You wanna stir it for five minutes, make sure it's thoroughly mixed and pour from high up so the bubbles get knocked out. Now it's time to get my inlay out of the cookie cutter. You can see the ridges in there. That's just an unfortunate byproduct of using tape, but the surface is pure and beautiful, which is what I want it for. There is a little bit of overspill. So again, get your cuticle cutters. I don't have them. <laughs> I used scissors just to trim off any of the overspill. Now we're placing our own DIY silicon inlay down into this mold. We're eyeballing it. We're turning it around to make sure that the wall is pretty even all the way around. This is gonna create our bowl. We're gonna give it a shove, give it a push, make sure it is fully connected with the silicon. And you can see here, I've still got a generous amount on top of the silicon inlay. So this, oh my gosh, I was so excited because this was working. This is this, this is the gorgeousness, the chunky chunk that I'm looking for. Now it's time to fill this with resin. Now the resin I'm using is Vista Ocean. Vista Ocean is the deep pour resin that you need for this because I just felt like it was really deep. I wouldn't wanna go in with any shallow resin. I wouldn't want any exothermic reactions. So I'm using a resin that is specifically designed and created for a deeper pour. And this is a 48 hour cure time resin. So yes, this project did take a few days and yeah, but it's worth it. It's so worth it because what we're creating is something completely unique that nobody else has, which is really cool. I also want to just say, I am creating this mold specifically with eco pores in mind. Really, Jasmine, I, any eco pores, that's what I'm creating this for. 
I do not think for a second that this mold is good enough for epoxy resin. Resin shows up all manner of sins. You know, with Ecos, we can just sand those sins away. Oh, there's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> so I filled up my mold right to the very top. Now, I said this is a 48 hour cure resin, but I am demolding after 24 hours. I don't usually demold early, but I knew because my inlay was a little bit wibbly wonky on the surface, we might get some spillage, some seepage down in under. And I wanted to get rid of that before it was 48 hours cured. This is the reason I'm wearing gloves. So if you are demolding early, if your resin is still floppy, you absolutely still need to protect your skin. You must be wearing gloves. I say must, everyone's got their own idea of what, what they, how they want to protect themselves, but I feel very, very strongly about this. You know, epoxy resin is only non-toxic once fully cured. So you see, if your resin is a flipping and a flopping, like if you're trying to make a bowl like I have in the past, I'm not even sure I wore gloves back then. Did I know about it then? I don't even know. The point is, if your resin has not fully cured, and it is still pliable, malleable at this point, you should still be wearing gloves. But here it is, it's so pretty. Yes, it's messy. This is where I was saying it's ideal for eco because we can just sand all of that away. No one will know, you know? Whereas resin, it's less forgiving. <laughs> it's less forgiving. Now it is time to mold our mold. So we've made our bowl by using an inlay in another mold. Now it's time to make a mold of our bowl. <laughs> this is going to give us a permanent silicon mold that we can use time and time again to create as many bowls as we want. Again, we're using our Let's Resin silicon rubber. I did take a lot longer, guys. That bowl does look shoddy, but I did take a lot longer to cut any and trim any excess around there and sand it back so it's nice and neat now. Now I'm going to be using, again, from Let's Resin, their mold housing. Now, I actually have two of these kits. Let's Resin sent me two kits because you can actually double these up in height if you've got something that's particularly high. I haven't needed to do that yet, but I have got two kits and I do go overboard on the bulldog clips. You don't, <laughs> you do not need to use two bulldog clips per section. I just, I just went overboard. You know, I did, <laughs> you don't need to do that. But again, these come in sections. So you just build your sections up around the item that you want to mold until you realize this is perfect or you need it bigger, you need it longer, whichever works for you. And just build it up around. Once you've got the exact mold housing size that you need for your item, start clipping it all together and these clips do an amazing job again you only need one per I was just feeling extra this day <laughs> oh I've missed one out I need to put that on but yes this is what it's looking like now I did use isopropyl alcohol to clean the bottom of our silicon mold housing if you own this mold housing you'll know that after every mold you make the sticky sided sticky sided double sided sticky tape that you use leaves a residue so the best way to get that off honestly is isopropyl alcohol i ended up taking my whole entire mold housing apart i rested it in a bowl for about half an hour and it came off like a dream now it is time to fill the bottom of this mold housing we need something to stick our bowl down onto i've used tape in the past i've used cricket vinyl I've used generic vinyl, I've used Cricut transfer tape, and I've also used sticky back plastic that you used to cover your school books in. And every single one of those products left me with a sticky residue surface on my silicon. But so many of you have told me that you use transfer tape with no issues. And I just didn't get it. I was like, I don't get it because it's not working for me. So I decided to have a play with a generic, non-specific brand, cheap, transfer tape and just see if that works for me otherwise I'm all out of ideas <laughs> you can see me here using the double-sided sticky tape that is provided in your mold housing kit from let's resin again all linked below 
You can see me using the double-sided tape. Now, just make sure you press it firmly. Press it firmly across all of those edges. Make sure you get that real solid seal and cut it off and then just peel back the other side of the tape. Do I need this? I, I just prefer to use it. I feel like it gives me more protection against leakage. I could just put my mold housing straight down onto my transfer tape. I don't trust the transfer tape, quite frankly. So yeah, that is why I still went ahead and I used my double-sided tape, making sure that everything is fully stuck together because we do not want any leakage. I am rapidly running out of silicon because sadly, this is my second attempt at making this mold, but I will definitely talk more about that in a moment. You'll see what happened on my very first attempt. So I am just putting my bowl in, making sure that I've got a really decent amount of wall around my bowl and the mold housing, and then it's time to mix up my silicon. Now again, you can color your silicon if you want, but I'm not gonna do it this time. I'm not gonna do it and I'll talk more about why. I'm using my brand new game changing, oh my gosh, this saved my hands, stirrer that Let's Resin sent me. Now they have sent me a new bundle of gorgeous things and I'm gonna do an unboxing. So that video either came out before this one or it will come out after this one. But this stirrer, honestly saved my hands this silicon needs to be mixed for around about five minutes to make sure that both components a and b are thoroughly mixed together and it did an amazing job same as before when we use the inlay to create the bowl we are pouring our silicon from high up my arm is right up in the air pouring from around two to three feet off the desk just to make sure those bubbles knock themselves out i'm going to go into the inside edge of the bowl that 90 degree edge with my tool just to dislodge any potential air pockets that may have got in there and again i'm pouring and pouring and pouring until my mold is completely filled up. Now I did mention I'm running out of silicon and it was at this point I knew I would not have enough silicon to fill this mold housing to the very very top which in an ideal world is what I wanted. I wanted a nice bit of silicon above so you can still see the rim of the bowl that's not ideal I wanted that covered up I wanted my silicon right to the very top but at this point I am out of silicon and this is where your old silicon can come in handy any old molds that you've made that you no longer use you can just shove it in there and take up some space so you're using less fresh silicon now here's the thing <laughs> This only works with non-coloured silicon. My first attempt at this bowl was a total disaster. Now, I have used old silicon and put it in fresh silicon in the past, and it's worked a dream. I did not realise that once you colour the silicon, it's not sticking, guys. Silicon sticks to silicon until it doesn't. And it doesn't stick to itself when there's colour in there. I could have cried. I ended up demolding this bowl and every old bit of silicon, and it wasn't even that old, it was the inlay. I cut up the inlay. It, 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 it was a disaster, guys. It was a disaster. So if I've learned anything, if you take anything away from this video, know that silicon sticks to silicon if it's the same brand, but only if it's not coloured. Is it because I use different colors? I don't know, but I will never do that again. And now I need to work out what I'm going to do with all of those extra chunky pieces of silicon because, um, yeah, I don't know. Any suggestions, put them in the comment section. It is now time to demold our mold. Really easy. The tape came away from the base like a dream. It was dry. I was so happy. I don't have that sticky residue anymore because I've used this generic transfer tape that has worked like you guys told me it would and then just take all of your bulldog clips off and remove all of the wall pieces from the housing and you have yourself a mold like this silicon <laughs> I want to say it's never failed me it really hasn't I absolutely love it but yes, you saw what happened there when I tried to add old pieces of silicon back into fresh silicon. 
that had been colored. It doesn't work, guys. It didn't work for me. Let me know if it's worked for you. It definitely did not work for me. But demolding this was pretty straightforward. Around the outside, the outside came away like an absolute dream. But of course, then we've got this middle section. This middle section is a 90 degree straight down mold. So the suction was real. It took me so long to get this out. I realized I needed some kind of like lever system. So I had to actually get in there with a tool and just break that suction seal between the silicon and the bowl and it came away. And we have ourselves an absolutely gorgeous reusable silicon mold and we can make as many bowls as we want. Now in an ideal world the walls of the mold would be maybe a bit thicker, the base of the mold would definitely be thicker but I still think we're going to be able to get a gorgeous eco jesmonite bowl out of this and I really want to get, well do I? want to get back to sanding? I don't. But I really do want to make a terrazzo, a gorgeous terrazzo bowl to go in my brand new bedroom with all of my new decor. It's worked so, so well. I truly feel like this is something we can all do because it's unique and original. Yes, I needed a lever to get it out of the mold, but that's okay. It's all part of process. Um, But yeah, if you want a unique mold, a unique bowl, a unique shape, then this is definitely something to think about. Finding something you can put an inlay into to create something around it or even if you had a heart silicon cake mold in the shape of a heart you could still make this inlay from a cookie cutter put it in there and then you've got a heart dish with a with a round dish in the middle am i making sense anyway this video is already long enough we're nearly 17 minutes in i hope you found this really really helpful please join me on saturday where we're actually going to use this mold we're going to make so many different things with this mold not all in one video but on saturday we're going to make a terrazzo bowl i hope you've enjoyed this found it helpful and i will see you all on saturday bye